Hey, good morning. Welcome to Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. George D. John on the train station fitness show. My guest in the studio is Dr. Jeremy Webster. We're talking today about sugar cravings. And, well, not sugar cravings. We're talking about the effects that sugar has on you. And you might want to think again about sugar and how it affects you before you pick that piece of candy up, cookie, whatever it is, that you wish to have or feel you really need to have. And maybe you don't need it, and you know you don't need it, but you're, there's this uncontrolled craving that you just cannot manage. We could probably get into that a little bit later on. If we can't, you could always call Dr. Jeremy Webster, 972-735-0707. Been on the show many times uh, before. Uh, past shows, if you're looking for past shows, you can always go to YouTube, put in 21 Day Body Makeover in YouTube, and you'll see the shows. I've got them videotaped. Or you can go to my website, 21daybodymakeover.com, and listen to the podcasts. Right now, we're talking with Dr. Webster about sugar. Specifically, I think there's one that really comes to mind, and we talk about fructose, and it's in fruit, and, and, and all these other cakes and candies and stuff like that. Um, but what, what really irks you and I is this commercial that came out about fructose, high fructose corn syrup not being bad for you. Right, because it's natural, right? Because it's natural. <laughs> I think we need to get into that. Let's talk about the latest study from UCLA and what they have to say and have said and many people have said for many years about just sugar in general. Sure. Well, sugar in general, we know that sugar is basically like adding fuel to the fire when it comes to a cancer cell. Uh, now, just so the audience knows, this is not a cancer show. This is a sugar show, but we're going to just use this study kind of as an intro to, to discuss how much difference there are between certain types of sugars. So we know just plain white sugar, table sugar, is, as I said, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. But what they found in this particular study, they, they used pancreatic cancer cells in a Petri dish, and they added white sugar, sucrose, and then they added uh, fructose, and they compared the growth rates. And what they found was fructose actually stimulates the growth of the cancer cells much more rapidly even than what we thought was the perfect fuel, white sugar. Well, let's talk about real fast, what is fructose? People say, Joe, hold on, you're talking about sucrose, fructose, glucose, all these oses, which is sugar. Right. Where does fructose come from? Well, you find it in fruit. In fruit. Well, hold on, Dr. Webster. But, you know, you are too. telling us that fruit isn't good for us. Not at all. Not at all. I'm just saying if you refine one of the, the components of fruit out right. and you concentrate it extremely high and then you consume it in a, in de, in a dose that is not normal, normal or, I mean, you would never, okay, for example, the average person in America eats 70 grams of fructose a day. A hundred years ago, the average person ate about 15 grams of fructose a day. I didn't know so, we even had that much, or because we didn't have it refined. Oh, but, but no, just I'm in fruit in general. Just in the fruit, just yeah. in the food. There, it, fructose is in foods, and fructose isn't inherently bad by itself unless you get two or three or four times the normal dosage. Then it becomes bad. So there are all different types of sugars. We can get. I've got several things I want to cover as far as right. different sugars. We're going to compare which sugars are better for you, which sugars are worse, and which ones are at the absolute worst. Are we also doing uh, sugar substitutes today? Sugar substitutes, different things. There's one particular sugar, uh, sugar that I want to talk about later that, that is being billed as a health sugar. And I'm going to tell you exactly how bad this sugar really is for you. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, you can call us. I'm going to take some calls today with Dr. Webster, 214-787-1310. Or if you're out of the listening area, you're listening on the computer, you can call 877-528-1310. It's 705 Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. 732 Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. George D. John, train station fitness show. I have calmed down for the moment. Uh, Dr. Webster is in the studio. We're talking about the effects of sugar on the body and what you may be thinking that's healthy for you, you're introducing to try to stay away from sugared foods may actually be very unhealthy for you. So we've got some people calling in. If you want to call in and talk about the sub subject, you can comment on it. You can ask questions. You can call us 214-787-1310 or uh, outside li listening area 877-528-1310. Let's go to David in Denton. You are on the ticket. Hey, David. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got a question for you, bud. Uh, you know, I try to eat pretty good during the week. I have a pot of green tea with stevia, but on the weekends, if I drink like three or four beers, after I drink the beers, I like got this crazy sugar craving for like ice cream or chocolate. What's, what causes that? Man, that's a fantastic question, David. I like that. 
again, it's, this, it's the same thing as just when you eat a lot of sugar or fructose. Right. Alcohol requires a lot of B vitamins and nutrients to right. process and metabolize the alcohol. So you're depleting yourself of nutrients, then you get these cravings. And we as dumb, conscious beings, we think that cravings just mean eat a bunch of junk food. Mm -hmm. just, you should probably eat a salad with your beer. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but nobody but, does. But one of the things I would suggest, if you do have beer or anything that does, let's, let's, let's blanket it. And, and if you don't agree with it, let me know. Anything that robs your body of nutrients, it's probably a good idea to take in whatever you're, whatever you're depleting of, more of those nutrients. So if you're not going to get it from food because you don't feel like eating the food while you're having your, your beer and a sandwich and some pretzels or potato chips and you're watching a football game, if you don't feel like having something healthy with that, then again, if you had all those things and you had one healthy thing, it wouldn't make a difference. My suggestion would be call Dr. Webster. He'll put you on some supplements that can assist you with that so you don't fall off 100%. Because let me tell you something. I've shared this many times before. 85% of my diet is perfect, sometimes 80%. The rest of it, you name the crap and I'm most likely eating it. It's okay because I'm re replacing it with the things that I'm losing. I'm exercising it off. I don't, I'm not going to gain the, or, uh, the, the, the causes of, weight, of sugar uh, problems, weight gain and heart disease and all those other things because the majority of what I do is healthy. So let's take, uh, before we take a call, the thought that a sugar substitute is healthy and really isn't is frustrating because people have asked me about this one particular sugar substitute that I am not aware of, and you did some research on it. Um, agave. Agave, yeah. Hopefully I've driven home the point of how much more dangerous fructose in particular is than other types of sugar. So when I got to looking at what what is agave, well, they basically take raw agave just like uh, the, the high fructose corn syrup manufacturers start with raw cornstarch and they process it virtually identically. What I found was when they get finished with agave, it's actually higher and more refined fructose than high fructose corn syrup. Meaning it's going to make you fatter, it's going to accelerate cancer growth more, it's going to cause more inflammation, cause higher triglycerides, more heart disease. It is the worst sugar substitute that I've ever found. With, the, wait a with the exception Hold of maybe on. aspartame, but it's, okay. it's worse then it's, it's the worst sugar. Okay. It's worse than high fructose corn syrup. It, wow. it, is, it is high fructose syrup itself. It's not made from corn. It's made from agave. And it has nothing. Had, it doesn't resemble the original agave So because agave of the process it went through, it's not good for you. However, if it came from, what does agave come from? It's just a plant. Okay, if it came from the plant. It starts as a plant, but corn is a plant too. I mean, okay. these all start. So it wouldn't be, it so wouldn't highly, be healthy if so someone says, refined. if I just had the plant and open the plant and use that, would that be healthy? No. Right, but they start with the root, they refine it, they use caustic materials, okay. caustic chemicals, solvents, all types of things to get to, to refine this. And it's. You it's heard it here terrible. first, Dr. Up, Webster saying. Up to 90 plus percent fructose. Wow. Extremely dangerous. Agave. So. Stay away from it. Let's go to Garrett in uh, Dallas. You're on the ticket, Garrett. What's up, Jens? You guys, Hi. most valuable show on radio, period, minute for minute. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <clears throat> Two quick questions. One, if on the weekend, if I'm going to have a cheat meal, is it better to have a big old crappy Mexican meal or eat a vegetable plate and have a few vodka tonics? Two, Bro, go, go ahead. Okay. Two, is <clears throat> taking a high glycemic sugar uh, pre and post workout, does that naturally boost your IGF-1 levels? Okay, we'll let you go. It's a great question. Uh, let me take the first one. Go ahead. I say eat whatever the hell you want, because if it's not going to be a good meal, whether that be, whether that be alcohol that can rob your body of certain nutrients, certain alcohol, or or it be bad food, you have to recognize that you're going to rob your body of certain nutrients that will make you go into this downfall, that uh, uh, or tailspin, if Nutrient you will. Nutrient depletion, yeah. Nutrient depletion, but but so people understand it's 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 more extreme than that. Nutrient depletion to you and I is profound. To someone else, okay, well, big deal. I'll you know put some more nutrients. I'll take another multivitamin. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way, and they need to know that, and it's important to know that. So it's better for you to have the meal that you want to have at the same time replacing the nutrients that are missing. So you have zinc, you have B vitamins, you have manganese, you have all of these things that need to be replaced. If you don't know what they are, great thing to do, call Dr. Webster, 972-735-0707, and you can have several supplements at your side so when you're going to have something bad, you can do that and not feel so bad about it or not go into this enormous tailspin. It can't be done all the time, great question. Number two. Yeah, it, drinking the, the, the high sugar drinks before and after can stimulate IGF-1, so you might get a little bit more protein synthesis out of it.
You're also boosting insulin levels and sugar levels, which may make it make you more likely to store fat, body fat. Right. So I don't. I'm not really a huge fan of of these high sugar 